So the other month I was contacted by one of you guys, a viewer, asking me a pretty simple question. Why didn't their CPU fit in their motherboard socket? They'd recently purchased an 1151 CPU and 1151 motherboard and they couldn't understand why it wouldn't fit in there. The typical internet response is, well you're clearly doing something wrong. But I've decided to look into it a little bit more than just saying that they're doing something wrong. I asked some questions asking things like, have you lined up the gold triangles and the two little notches? To which they replied yes, however, the gold triangle was on one of the sides with the notches and that really piqued my curiosity. So I asked this viewer to see if they could post some images to an image site to see whether I could have a look and exactly see what was going on because honestly it doesn't make sense for an 1151 CPU and 1151 motherboard not to be compatible and to my surprise it was a fake CPU. So today we're gonna to show you how to spot a fake CPU and not go ahead and fall into a trap like this. Now in this particular scenario, if we do take a look at this image right here, whilst the viewer does not claim to be a professional photographer, it is enough of an image for us to go ahead and actually see what is going on. Taking a look at the chip, we see that the gold triangle is actually in the correct location and they've installed it completely right. However, if we look just a little bit up, we see that the two notches right here and here are on the side side with the gold CPU. Also too, before we do show you a legit version of the CPU, let's also to take note at around the PCB area, there are no gold contacts, which is very common on Intel CPUs. Then finally, there's also too a faint black bar with some information on it, which we really haven't seen since the third generation of Intel CPUs. So do keep that in mind. And let's take a look at a legit Intel Core i7-6700K and boom, we can see quite some differences. First off, the gold triangle is in the bottom left hand corner and also too we have the two notches at the top as opposed to the left hand side. So if we do some comparisons there's notches on the sides as opposed to at the top and there's also two no gold contacts on the fake version as opposed to the real one. So in this particular case it's kind of obvious here that this guy is a fake but let's get into how to actually spot one but first there's actually two types of fake CPUs. There's the dummy unit and there's also two a knockoff. So if the dummy unit is exactly that, a fake unit that doesn't exactly work, it picks up, it feels exactly like a real Intel CPU, it's got a piece of metal on the top, it's got some PCB and gold contacts with some little transistors on the bottom, but at the end of the day, they're nothing more than placeholders. Sometimes these will be actually real CPUs that failed the Intel test, Intel went ahead and actually soldered them off on the factory so they'll never work, chucked in a bin, someone's found that bin, taken them out of the bin and tried to sell them and pass them off as legitimate CPUs. So that's one way you might actually end up getting a fake CPU. Another alternative is actually just a knockoff of the Intel CPU. It looks, feels and actually has all the components in there, but the actual processor inside this little guy would be something like an ARM processor or something very basic and easy to implement in a socket system like this. A very smart person will then wire the fake CPU up to actually work with the Intel standard and the CPU will post the system and you'll be able to install Windows and some of the time you'll be able to actually get get in and actually do stuff, but the CPU will be extremely slow, extremely underpowered and not rated for the voltage and actually specifications that the motherboard will be offering. So within a few hours, minutes or even days if you're lucky, that CPU will fry itself and probably take out your motherboard and other system components. These type of knockoffs aren't as common as something like just a complete dummy unit because they're a lot more harder to engineer and a lot of actual thinking and thought process needs to go into a fake knockoff unit, but they are still out there. So how on earth do we spot what a fake CPU looks like? First and foremost, obviously the design of the CPU. If it doesn't look like a legit version, it probably isn't. Take our reference from the start of this video for a good example. If we take a look at this legitimate Core i7-6700K and then compare it to this not so legitimate 6700K, we see quite a few obvious things. Number one, these gold contacts are missing. Number two, there's also two a black info bar on the knockoff version which again we haven't really seen for quite some time on the Intel side. On top of that we also do see that the Intel's two little notches on either side which is up at the top section of every CPU, for example this is a second gen Intel CPU with the little notches up the top, 
are on the side on the fake version, which is really not that legitimate. On top of that, if we look very, very closely on this image, we see it doesn't actually take up the 1151 socket. It's actually one row less in terms of its pin count, so it's not true 1151 socket there. So the first and most obvious way to actually spot a fake is just by looking at a legit version. If you are shopping online, get the biggest and highest res image of the version you are looking at, then go ahead on something like Google or a legitimate PC review site and go ahead and try and find a review image or a review sample of the CPU where you can see all the coding and contact information about the particular CPU. So first, looks will be your first choice. After that, we need to check more specific information about the CPU other than just the particular model number. We'll need to look at the FPO, ATPO, CPU family, processor number, and even in some cases, the specified manufacturer location. We then need to take this particular information off the CPU and then plug it to the actual box. A lot of the time when you're purchasing either a used CPU or a new in-box CPU, you want to match the numbers and coding on the actual CPU itself with the actual numbers and coding on the box. A fake CPU can't actually line up the coding on the actual CPU, the PCB and the box at the same time. A lot of knockoff manufacturers just go with one particular model, throw it in a legitimate box and everything doesn't match up. If we go to the Intel website, we actually have a handy dandy tool to actually let us know where all this information is. So if we want to know the FPO number on this particular CPU, we can find that it is, well, right here. And if we want to know the ATPO on this particular CPU, it is, well, right over here. So go ahead and find that link down in the description box if you want to go ahead and take a look at your CPU, but essentially whatever information is here on the heat spreader and also to the green PCB around the heat spreader will also to be on the box that your CPU comes in. If they all don't match up, don't buy it because there's a chance that it's either a scam, knockoff, or something isn't really right. If all the numbers on both the PCB, the heat spreader, and the box all match up, but you're still a little bit hesitant, go ahead and jump over to the Intel website as they do have a tool out there to allow you to check the warranty status and also to the legitimacy of a CPU. So you can go ahead and plug those information in and boom, you should be just about right to see whether it was a legit product or not because if those model numbers don't show up on the Intel database, it was never manufactured and registered by by Intel themselves. And finally, the best way to spot a fake CPU is just look at the price. If it's too good to be true, the old saying comes back to it, it probably is. If you're looking at a $700 CPU and it's on eBay or some other online site for $350, you can be just about certain that it probably isn't a legit part. There is a reason why parts are expensive and that is because of all the R&D that goes into these little guys. Even though they may be small and not a lot of materials there, a ton of research and development does go in there. However, on the Intel side, it can be argued against seeing they're just releasing the same thing over and over and over, but that's for another video. So if your price isn't right, probably don't buy it. But all in all, the best way to stop yourself getting scammed and not buying a fake CPU is is just buy from a legit seller. If you're here in Australia, something like Scorp Tech or Centacom are awesome ideas to go ahead and buy from. Over in other countries, NCIX, Newegg, and many other online sites that are big, reputable brands are great places to buy from. Whilst I do personally love a great deal on PC tech, at the end of the day, I'm not sure about you, but I'd rather spend $50 more knowing that I'm getting a legit processor that has a legit warranty that I can take back if something is wrong and not end up with a CPU that's too small for my CPU socket on the motherboard. And if you go ahead and apply all this, you should be pretty safe when going ahead and buying a CPU. Now, if you are buying an AMD processor, everything that we did talk about today can easily apply to AMD. AMD also too has info on there and they also do have very very individually designed chips. So if you're looking at a fake, it's going to be obvious if you're closely comparing an image from the internet to the actual one that's in the photo. So AMD can basically take everything that we talked about with Intel chips, apply it over something like the FPO number, maybe a different type of naming scheme over on their AMD side. But at the end of the day, check the model numbers, check them with the box, and also to check them online, and also to just have a good close look. And that's about it for spotting fake CPUs. If you unfortunately have picked up a fake CPU, let me know down in the comment section. Also to let me know how you went trying to get your money back because a lot of the time they're not going to play ball with you once you figure out that it was a scam. So if you have purchased one of these, do let me know down in the comment section. Also to let me know down in the comment section if you have your own ways of finding out a scam product or some sort of thing that may not be the most legitimate. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.